Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day. Oops. Sorry about that. All right. So I am back from being hacked or hijacked, however you want to say it. <laughs> all is good. Just have a bit of stuff to do on my channel. Repost a bunch of, of uh, videos, but I'm back. That's the main thing. Hey, Lena. So I have posted this on the uh, membership community page, and there's a downloadable link for the traceable for this if you want to paint along. And we're going to be doing snow. I love snowy look to uh, paintings. Uh, there's only one thing I have to go and get, um, and that's a wax crayon. So you're going to need watercolor, white gouache, and some wax crayon. Um, I don't think I have my uh, clear wax crayon, preferably, but just hold on. I think I know where they are. Container full here for my grandkids. Um, if I have a, a light colored one, I don't will really use that. I don't know if I have white. It's kind of a light pink. Um, or a light blue would do also, but preferably a, a clear. use that pink one. Oh, what's this one? This one might be white. Yeah, it's this one's uh, clear or white. It just has a bunch of pink on it right now. <laughs> All right. Let's clean it off by like to sharpen it too. If you have a manual sharpener, you could use that. I think I might have one around here somewhere. Cheapy. Let's see. So how's everybody doing today? Oh, there's one. Hey, Anne. So I'm just going to sharpen this in here. I just want a, a point because I'm going to be making some smaller marks first. That'll do. All right. So you could probably use a birthday candle, too, if you have that. Hey, Jilly. Um, that'll work also. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some marks before we start painting. That way we can um, uh, preserve them. And they're not a really strong mark. They're a little bit more um, grainy looking, depending on your paper, too. If you're using a rough... Um, textured watercolor paper, you might have a little bit more difficult time getting into those little grooves, but you could actually put a real thick uh, mark on and then take your heat gun and um, heat up your page and the, the uh, wax should melt into that depending on how much you have on. So if you want, you can take a screenshot of that. If you're not a member, um, members have this already. Oh, I don't have this 
photo. I will put this photo up too later, uh, but I do have the traceable for you if you want to go and get that. Or you can just take a screenshot. It's up to you. All right, I'm just going to keep that in front of me. And I want to just do some marks. And I'm just not going in a circle. I'm going up and down. Because if you see falling snow, especially when you're taking a photograph, it's more of an oval shape than an actual round shape. Okay. Just something interesting. Um, so if you really study your painting, you'll see that. You can put it all over, even on the on the leaves and the branches. Um, make some smaller, make, make some bigger, just put a bunch of them on. Uh, you can do the down, down here too, where the snow is going to be, because we want to keep some of this light paper color. Now this paper I'm using in my uh, sketchbook isn't watercolor paper and it isn't white. It's an off white, but that's fine. So just all over the place, as many as you want. Don't make them too big though. And then we will be putting some gouache on here or maybe even uh, some white ink. So if you put white ink on top of a wet watercolor, it does some really cool stuff. So we'll do that today. Now I can't really see how much I got on here, but I'm gonna put in as much as I can. And then we'll see what happens when we start painting this way. Uh, it's a little easy, easier to uh, have those marks in there. Now you could take uh, masking fluid, frisket type of stuff and do it that way. But if you don't have any, this is a great way of, of uh, preserving some of it. So I want a fairly big brush. Now, I'm not going to keep this too wet, and I'm going to work very quickly because this is just sketchbook paper again. So it's going to um, need to be done kind of quickly so it doesn't uh, seep through to the other side. Uh, let's see. Just use a plain old brush. Use what you have. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a watercolor brush. It could be whatever you want. And um, I'm just going to be doing... Oh, I wonder if I should do the snow. Yes, I think I'm going to take that this white crayon. And wherever the snow is on top of the leaves, I'm going to put some of that too. Okay. Now I do have some areas... Uh, that I haven't put in, you can put in as much as you want. But I just felt that I didn't really need all of this in for you guys to do. And I wanted to keep it fairly simple. And we will use uh, maybe some acrylic paint. Now this is kind of taking the graphite off. But snow isn't white, white underneath. It's uh, kind of a bluish gray color or even into the, your mauves. So if it's looking a little bit off color, don't worry about it because we're going to add some gouache to this. And let's see. So it's just lying on top of the uh, stems and... and on top of the leaves. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
this one. That's a leaf. Right in here. There, a little bit in here. And right in here. And right in here. Let's just have fun with it. Okay. All right, so let's do the top and the bottom colors. So we're going to go into uh, purples and uh, Payne's gray, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. And mm, looks like there's a little bit of red in there too. Some really dark darks. But it's lighter, it gets lighter as we go down more into the purples, mauves, that type of thing. So let's try this. So we want, I'm going to make a mix up before I wet my paper because this is going to be a fairly quick thing. So I don't want um, to have to make paint up when my, I wet my paper then it'll just dry up and I'll have to re-wet. So just save yourself a little bit of time by making up some. So, so here's some Payne's Gray. I might probably make up a few colors. Um, let's see. Payne's Gray. I'm going to add some uh, dioxazine Purple over here. And some ultramarine blue to that purple. So it's more of a bluey purple. And it's fairly uh, watered down. I have a paper towel ready. So you can switch back and forth which ones you want to put in. More of this, a more blue, just to thicken up a little bit. All right, so let's actually, I'm going to spray my page. All right, so we have the real darks up here. So I'm just gonna Put that purple and the Payne's gray in here and let it do its thing. We can get some blue in there. So just play with it. Don't worry too much about where it's supposed to go. We just want a little bit of color in here. As we get down into this part, just add some water to your brush and bring it down. Now, I'm going to just swipe up some of that there. And I'm going to bring it down into this bottom area. And you'll see it's re rejecting the um, areas that I put the uh, wax. Okay. I'm just going to pat it here and there. A little sop sop some of this and now I'm gonna dry it. He did it. Again, this isn't watercolor paper I'm using, it's just plain old sketchbook paper. So if you're working on watercolor paper, you probably won't need to dry as much as I do.
Alright, good and dry. Yes, congratulations, Devin. It's uh, almost a start to your new adventure. Now I want to put in some more on the top there because it's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to get some more of that Payne's Gray a little bit thicker. And the blue. And di dioxazine purple. I don't want quite as much water this time. I want it a little thicker. And this time I'm going to take my brush, I think. I'm just going to wipe. On here. Okay. And we'll add more blue, a little purple in there. Oop. Down the sides. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my um, kitchen roll paper here and just dab out a few areas. So it's a little more interesting, just like that. And dry it again. Make sure it's good and dry. This is pretty amazing. Thanks, Devin. Who's up to play? The only way you can find out. Anybody can play. That's why I always say have a sketchbook or a journal, whatever, and just play in it. Don't show anybody. Because that's just your experiment. Uh, most of the time, you may not like it. Especially if you're just beginning. It takes practice. The more practice, the more you understand how that medium works. this on the bottom now just a bit of water and now oh I didn't mix my paint that was silly um, we're gonna do more of the blues now so I have some 
this is cobalt blue and maybe a little aqua in there and again it's also a little bit um, scattered like messy looking you'll have some uh, lighter areas and darker areas there's really no um, Um, recipe for this just play but you want a little different and you want a little lighter so I'm going to just take my paper roll again tab off some and then dry this one's easy you only have to do it once Great. So there's our background. Simple. There's no wrong way of doing your background. It can be different. It can have different colors. You just play with it until you like it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my leaves in first. So here's, here's the leaves. And they're almost a reddish... Almost in alizarin crimson color with a bit of mm, scarlet lake in it, maybe orange. So, again, these can be done differently too. So, what I look at first for doing this is what's the medium color, medium. Um, shade of of all of these so it's basically uh, this color in here so it's a fairly light i would say that one would be scarlet lake it looks like so that's what i'm going to do and then i'm going to put a light shade of it on though because there are some lighter areas and i can always go darker with my sketchbook paper, I can't go lighter <laughs> unless I use gouache. So we're going to start with a light shade of uh, Scarlet Lake. And I'm using uh, Windsor Newton Scarlet Lake. And I'm going to wipe off an area just so that it's clean. I don't want it dirty. With this color, I'll leave some of that blue in case we want to go back. But I want an area that I can play in. Okay, so Scarlet Lake, I think this is it. It's awful. Let me see. In case I changed that, I might have and forgot to put the label back on. Nope, wait a minute. 
Nope, that is Scarlet Lake. Okay. So I got a lot of water on my brush. I want light colors. So, oh boy, some of these are, I can hardly see, but I'm going to try and stay away from my snow area. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I didn't put all of these in. So that one is this one here. So it comes out a little more. And this one is very light. And uh I put the wax in here also, so it's going to repel this watercolor. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, yellow on my plate or palette here, uh, Indian yellow. Uh, this one's fairly light. It's got a little bit of that Indian yellow color in it. I'm going to turn off the overhead lights so it doesn't glare on you. Okay, and then we can continue with these ones here. Okay, so we see. And if they're not exactly what's on the photograph, that's okay. Every leaf is different. So don't stress about that. Actually covered up a bunch of, I'm going to put some in that snow just to get some of the dots. And then this one here. that and then there's another one here now remember i didn't put all of them in so it may look a little different you can put more in if you want that and the one in here And in here. I think I had one up here too. Uh, and this one. This is very beginner easy, guys. It may look complex but it's not that difficult so give it a try let's see I'm gonna get my other drawing out just so I can see where what I've done okay so that one Um, I think that's it up here. There's actually um, that one's there, and then there's there's one up in here, but it's blurred out. So I'm gonna put it in. And then I'm going to take a wet, clean brush and let 
the water blur out. Now, I'm not going to get as much of a blur because this is um, plain old paper, sketchbook paper. And this one's kind of blurred too. Add a little bit. That was behind this one here. And we could put a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson in there just to darken it. Mm. A little bit. And where else? Okay. So let's put a few in the background here. So see there's some blurry ones behind. So just wet your page. Well, don't put a lot in, but wet your page here and there. And just add a little bit of that color. Just dab a little bit of, and let it blur out. And it'll give that indication of other uh, other ones in there, but you can't see them because they're in the background. like that. Okay, so let's try that. And as you know, watercolor dries lighter. So you can always go back and add a little bit more if you want. All right, now we can do a little bit of detail. So you can see that there's some dark lines in here. Now, if you have watercolor paper, before you do the leaves, you could actually um, bruise the paper by taking a, uh, a stylus and, and making the lines and then when you put in the paint, the lines will actually be darker. Um, I don't let's see. Here's a piece of watercolor paper I'll show you. Okay, so we'll stylus this, the little ball on the end. So depending on what size you have. Uh, pencil. To show you. Well, I, don't, I guess I don't need a pencil. Okay, so 
say this is a center line and then we have these veins that come out okay and then we take that color and then we just do our leaves and it paints the stems for you so once that dries the stems will get darker now if you let it dry on its own it will be darker but if you dry it with a hair dryer it tends not to be as dark as it could be so i'll show you See how it's not as dark? Now if I put a little bit more on and I'll leave it. And I'll show you what it does in about five minutes. All right. So now we can take... Uh, smaller brush let's see what do i have here brushes here it is so this is a number four i'm using and now i can do the same thing but i'm going to use a darker color so this is the uh alizarin crimson And I'm going to add a little bit of umber to that and darken it just a little bit. And then I can do my veins. So um, you can do them depending on how you want them. You can do wet into dry or you can still do wet into wet. I'll show you the difference. Uh, this one here. I have a little bit of a turned leaf. And... a little darker in here so i'm just using glycerin crimson and a little bit of of uh, burnt umber here just along the sides would be a little darker A little bit of brown on the this part. Just take a look at uh, leaves, and you can get the. I'll put the this uh, photo up for you, so you can see the colors. Okay. Depends how, how much you want to do this, too. Um, a little, I'm going to mix some um, that burnt umber with that uh, Scarlet Lake. So they'll all be different. So this one got a turned leaf. A little darker and a little darker on the inside of that leaf too a 
And this one can be darker. It's kind of sheltered by the snow on top, so it'd be a little bit shadowed. And this one has quite a bit That. This one doesn't have a whole lot, but just a few lines along the edge, little veins. Can't really see too much of a vein there. Mm. This one here is pretty dark. Let's add more of that umber color. Some, some of them you can't see the veining at all. It's just really, really dark. Um, this one up here, a little bit of, of the alizarin crimson, just along the lines on the back side of this one. It's kind of flipped, but you can see the veins a little bit. And then a darker color on the inside. And this one has just a little bit of a darker edge to it. With just a few of the veins showing. So let's see, that's the white. This one here, a little bit of that crimson color again. The vein goes down and then mostly like that. A little bit on the side here. And I'm just going to take my clean water and just soften one side. Just to let it seep out a little bit. This side is actually a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little more. This one's fairly dark, so I'm going to get the um, umber and lizard and crimson mix. Don't worry about it, too. If they don't look exactly like your picture, like I said, they're all different. No one's going to notice. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit to these now. Actually, I'm going to wet them. Just add a little bit of difference of um, hue to them. Add a little bit of that dark mix here and there. Not on all of them, but 
just here and there so it shows that they're different colors. A little bit here and there. Oh, you're um, reorganizing everything. Getting ready for the move. And then I've got a little bit of purple on my brush. And I'm just going to dip in just here and there a little bit of this really dark purple. So it's really dark in here. This one here has quite a bit of dark on one side. So I can put that in. Uh, this one here can have some. It's got some really dark areas. And in here. a little bit more that's okay there this one can be darker so the the trick is to get contrast in your painting and to do that you have to have darks and lights and if they're not dark enough then it looks very uh, one-toned and it's not appealing to the eye so to get that variance in color you need to dar either darken your darks or maybe both lighten and darken until you think it looks right Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for now, and now I'm gonna do some of the the uh, stems, and the stems are pretty much black. So you can either use a. I wonder if I have a. I could use a black, and they're not blurred out. Um, although the black. Uh, now let's just do some black. So I have, where did I put them? Oh, they're probably upstairs. If you have a black watercolor marker, you could use that. Uh, I'm gonna mix some paints gray and some burnt umber together. And we'll make a really dark, dark. I don't have black in my palette right now, but that's okay. Now I'm going to paint in these darks. And then we'll put the snow on.
Now, like I said, this isn't the exact um, drawing of the photograph. I just used it for a reference, more or less. Uh, you can make yours exactly like it or just use it like I do. And it's covered with snow, so we're going to have snow on them. I'm just getting the main ones in right now. Let's see. There, that one's blurred. Let's see this one here. That. That. Uh, it's okay, Jelly. All righty. Now I can take a little bit of water and we can make sure it's clean water though. And we can make um, some in these areas where the in-betweens, you can put some more stems in there, but blur them out. So if you put them through A wet area, they blur out on their own. It kind of looks nice. I like it. You'll have all kinds of it's thick, thick with uh, stems. If you're looking at a tree like this, this is a uh, beech or birch, no, beech tree. So they, they keep their um, leaves almost through the whole winter. They're kind of cool. It looks pretty in the winter. And then they usually drop them in March, April. Like that. And I can put one out here. A little bit fuzzy.
a little bit too much water. Let's dry that. All right, so now with the snow on the leaves, I want it fairly bright. So you can either use uh, an acrylic or a gouache, doesn't much matter. Um, I'm actually gonna spray this with a fixative first so that it doesn't bleed through my white paint. Because that's the only thing that happens with uh, watercolor. When you're trying to put a white paint on top, doesn't matter if it's acrylic or uh, gouache. A lot of times the, depending on the pigment that's underneath, will seep through that white and won't have that white white. So if you use a fixative on your paper, it just saves a lot of anguish. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. So I have a fixative. So I'm just going to go spray this and I'll be right back. I'm just going to dry it, make sure it's good and dry. And now we can do some snow. So if you have, you could do this with a sponge, you could do it with um, a bristle brush. Here, let me put those in there. So I'm going to try and see, where's my acrylic? See if this will work. Oh, I should have put, I was going to do that and I forgot. I was going to put snowflakes with acrylic ink on, but I forgot. It has to have a wet paint to do that. I'm 
I'm just going to tap off on the side here and I just want to see if this is going to work. No. I'm just dabbing. Let's see if this fixative worked or not. So far it looks like it did. So that's good. These bigger areas, I'm just going to tap in this gouache. And I can use a smaller brush. If you got a smaller brush, you can use that. I'm just going to get the bigger areas here now, and then I'll switch to a smaller brush. Yeah, I think that worked. So that's good. So let's get a smaller brush. If you have a deer foot stippler, that'll work. Um, I have a small one somewhere. I guess I could use this. Actually, I have this one too. Maybe I'll use this one. So just dab. And you can go along the edge of your um I can't speak today. Of your stems, branches, where it would be snowy. Carrying that snow load, some of it's on the leaves. And you'll see some where the leaves are kind of curled. There'll be some curled on the leaves itself. So like in here, this one here has some. And a little bit on there. And you can always go back and put more stems in if you want. If you covered some up and you want them showing a little bit more. Let's see. This one here has snow on top of the leaf kind of goes down it's a very snowy day this one has a little bit in there One, let's see, this one has snow on it. A little bit in there.
because it's on the leaf and you're you're seeing this leaf kind of close up um it will look a little it's not going to look smooth i guess i should say And roll in here. Uh, let's see, this one, I have a little bit in there, it's from the snow collecting on it. This one. Okay. Devin. Now let's dry that and then we can um, do a little bit of detail. Now you can take your small brush again. Where did I put that? Where did I put it? There, I'll use this. And just fix up a little bit of those stems, maybe a little darker. Where really, it's needed. I'm going to take this one off the edge of my page, I think. And maybe another one there. Take it under here. Let's darken it up a little bit. where I want a little bit thickness in there in here a bit there that and I can put little little uh, knobs off of some of these. They're little, um, little stems that stick out on the beech trees from where the stems were. Sometimes you'll see them. Just adds a little bit more detail. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to. And 
add a little bit more to our leaves if you want to make them a little bit more showy. Add a little bit of Indian yellow to some of these to brighten them up a little bit here and there. Change the color a bit, but sometimes it looks cool. Here. It's just a real quick one. Didn't take much. Anyone can do this one. I'm just darkening some of these um, veins here and there. Just to bring them out a little bit. Right. And I'm going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to soften it a little bit. And I'll put some snow on there, I think. Just on the top. Okay, and now we can put some bigger snowflakes on. I'm just going to take a bigger brush. I'm just going to flick it.
think I'm going to put one more just staring at it. I'm going to make this go out too. Just think it needs it a little thicker. Like that. All right, I think it's done. So, hey, Dar or Dare. <laughs> Barbara it's not a difficult one I, I promise and the uh, printable is up on the community page I haven't put it on the Patreon yet but I will do that Just uh, give me about an hour after we're done here so today is 11 29 22 So it's not um, hyper reality type of drawing. It's it's more impressionistic. It's very simple, easy to do. Um, give it a try. This would make a really nice card too, and you could put Merry Christmas on the bottom here or on the top. So I hope you'll give it a try and see what you can do with it. And uh, if you don't have any questions, I'll let you guys go. Don't see anybody saying anything. All right. Okay, so um, we'll see you on Thursday. We'll be doing an acrylic painting, and it'll be of a um, cute little snowman family. <laughs> and uh, I'll be putting the traceable up on the Patreon and YouTube membership. And if you're interested in that, you can check down below in links um, or in the description, just press uh, more and it'll show you the link there. And you can uh, get the downloadable. All right, so I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic afternoon or evening, whatever it is for you. And we'll see you on Thursday. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>